Let's take a look at this small program. It starts by drawing a green vertical line and then locating the robot at the end of that line. We're going to set the speed a little bit slower than normal and we're going to make the line invisible to the robot so that it can move over top of it. And then we'll simply move the full robot forward 250 pixels. Let's take a look at this. Notice how straight the robot moves. That's because in the simulation world, the robot normally is an ideal situation. In the real world, though, there's friction and inefficiencies of the motor and all sorts of things that can make the robot move and improperly compared to what you expect. We've built that into Robot Basic 2. If you use the R slip command, you can add a percentage of error. Let's add a sizable error here, 25%. You can add any amount, 3%, 5%, 20%, whatever you wish. And you'll get some form of error between 0 and the number you give. Let's see how this affects the robot. Remember, the robot is supposed to move straight up the line. See how it's veering off? This is the way a real robot might do. We're running it again. It's veering off a little bit further than last time. This time it's running pretty straight. Then veering off to the right. The error that we use is totally random. You should always have a little bit of slip in your programs when you're building an algorithm because it allows you to try to test what you're building as if it were a real robot. What we need to do now is to see how we can correct this as much as possible with a real robot. Here I'm using a very similar program to make my 3PI move in a straight line. You'll notice though that it drifts to the left. See how it's moved to the left? This is an example of a very simple program to control the real robot just like you saw. The rcomport statement sets up so that the real robot is being used. We locate the robot. It really doesn't matter what numbers we use here since it's real. And then we're moving it forward in this case 250. As we saw, our robot drifted to the left. We have a special command. It's called an R command, a robot command. And the robot command has several parameters. If the first parameter is the actual command itself, if we use the number 116, that's the command to stop this drift, like we saw the robot drifting to the left. We give it a number, and in this case a hex number, use 0x to proceed the number to make it hex. You really don't have to understand exactly what is happening here with the hex number, just understand how to use it, at least for now. If we put in a number here, for example, 1, 0, the number on the left, the 1, is indicating that we want to move the left wheel of the robot a little faster. If we made it a 2, it would be a little bit more faster, and the 3 would even be more faster. This is the kind of numbers we want to use if we make the robot, make the robot want to move to the right, which would be a correction for ours that's drifting to the left. If it was drifting the other way, we would put the number perhaps in this direction. That would make the white wheel, the right wheel, move faster, and it would tend to make the robot move left, thus compensating if your robot is drifting to the right. Let's try to compensate for ours. We'll put in a 0 for a 4 0 to make our program, our robot move a little to the right and try it again. Notice that in this case we've overcorrected and the robot is now moving too far to the right meaning our left wheel is moving too fast. It appears that we have sped up the left wheel a little too much. So let's change the 4 
to 1 and only increase the left wheel just slightly, hoping that that will overcome the leftward drift we have by making the robot move a little bit more to the right. Notice now that the robot will move in a relatively straight line. Don't expect it to be perfect though. You won't get that unless you use wheel counters, which we may have available on a future robot. For now though, try these techniques and see if you can get your robot moving a little straighter.